Good morning, family of faith. Thank you so much for being in service with us today. Today's scripture comes from Psalms 27, 14. It says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your presence here today. Dear Lord, we ask that your spirit just rest on every single person in this place. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with us in this service. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
my favorites. Love America. Okay, we have announcements. We're going to tag team on you. I'm going to start. You can go next. Sorry, lots of coffee this morning. Vacation Bible School is coming. What days are we having? Should I write that on here? Yeah. Uh, July. What is this? 14th. No. What day is this? 12. 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. 12. It's coming. I'll just be here. Um, okay. Vacation Bible School. July 12th, 13th, 14th. We do three days because three days is a lot. <laughs> um, some churches do five days. Pray for them. <laughs> um, they are probably have Vacation Bible School at the beginning of June and are still recovering. So um, pray for those churches. But also... Pray for us that God will work through our babies because they are the future of not only our church, but America as well. So they need lots and lots and lots of prayer. Um, that being said, we have a volunteer sign up. It's right here. There's going to be 57,000 uh, clipboards come through the sanctuary this morning. So make sure you see all of them. There will be a quiz later. So we'll ask you if you read them all as well. Just kidding. Um, uh, volunteers, we need volunteers for check-in, music, gym, refreshments, and art. And music and gym are basically the same thing, just one's inside and one's outside. Kind of. Okay. Food items needed. I know, I, she's getting irritated with me. Food items needed. If you would like to donate for the snacks for the kids, Madison changed and has some really cute ideas for the... Um, snack time she's doing a an icing dipper night so god bless you refreshment <laughs> people um so yeah and s'mores are going down it's happening and um, so make sure you look through this bring your snack stuff as soon as possible um volunteers we love 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 volunteers i think every year we do bbs we have more volunteers than we have children actually and it's awesome it is an awesome problem to have and it's not a problem it's a blessing because our church is the best so um to end our slip and slide our slip and slide i read that instead of this the to end our bbs we are going to have slip and slides so as soon as commencement is over sunday night, sunday night july 16th at five o'clock we'll have commencement and then we'll take all those sweet little babies out and let them play in the water and just have a blast so um I'll let her talk about that because I probably messed all of the whole thing up and she can fix it. Go. No, you did great. Uh, you know that this year we are not being able to make our mail outs to the community because uh, Choctaw has changed their policies. So we have to advertise slip and slide. The thing about slip and slide, everybody knows, we've done this over 15 years now. That is in August, usually the first Saturday of August, but we changed it with being BBS. We wanted to bring, we wanted the kids in the community to see what we have to offer. Yep. And we have the number one puppet team of the state, do we not? <laughs> yes. And we have the best praise and worship team ever. <laughs> and our kids need to see, the kids of the community need to see more than our slip and slide out front. So that's why we combined them. With that being said, again, we do not have the mail out capacity that we normally do. So uh, Emily put together these flyers, boys, gentlemen. They are going to pass these out. These can go anywhere in commercial places. The city of Choctaw allowed me to post this at their uh, bull board in Epic City. But we need to get these uh, information out. We have a mailing list of over 500. We're sending postcards out right now. They're in the mail right now. Okay? These are really. For those of you looking online, these are really pretty. They are. Good this job. I am very proud of. This year we have combined, we have a new packet of school supplies. This is amazing. It has everything in it. 
And these backpacks, this is not the only backpack, but I thought this was adorable, so I got it out. Yeah, um, but there's all different colors and different designs, as usual. So we, this is what we're going to pack, pass out Sunday night, July 16th, from 6 to 8. We will... Five. Huh? Well, 5 o'clock is commencement. Yeah. We will assemble and put together everything. Robert hates me this time of year. <laughs> but then he gets all and told every year, Robert, please. And he does it. He is going to graciously take care of the setup. Um, I don't know when he's going to do lay out the slip and slide, but that's always a great big alarm for everyone to go by and see that big yellow tarp out front. But as a group, we are going to set up for slip and slide that Saturday, which is the 15th, right after men's breakfast. And we're even going to put up the canopies and have everything pretty much to go for Sunday, because Sunday we have, of course, regular services, then we have commencement, and then we have our BBS time, or uh, slip and slide time. So I really, 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 really need you all to volunteer on this. There's different venues. We, are, we aren't collecting uh, food because I'm gonna buy as a, group, as a package at Sam's because we had money this year from people who have graciously donated. But always need help, okay? So if you have any questions, please let me know. Honestly, go to any restaurant, any store, ask them, they will let you post these, okay, in the community, not just talk talk. We have a lot of people coming from Midwest City. We have a lot of people coming out from Herod, McLeod. We've got them from Luther, but they need this information out there, and we're kind of with our hands tied, but we're not, because God's taking care of this, right? So that's where we're at. If, again, you have any questions, let me know. The postcards have been mailed. The first set of postcards are coming out. You should get those Monday or Wednesday. If you did not get those, please let me know because I'm, we want to make sure everything's good to go on the bulk mail. Uh, we'll set out a second set a week from Monday. And if you know anyone who doesn't know anything about us, call them. Do something. Get contact. These kids need this freebie that we have. Oh, also, please bring your clothes. Nearly new children's clothing. Bring them as soon as possible. We'll just put them in the fellowship hall. Good? Are we packing backpacks before Saturday? That Saturday is when we're doing it. We're doing everything Saturday. We're doing a backpack Saturday. We're bringing up the stuff out of, out of the shop. Yeah. yeah. Wednesday through Sunday will not be a stop. But we have to do that Saturday thing because of BBS. We don't want to get in their way. So... That's, that's the reason. Okay? Any other questions? Thank you very much, Jim. Use that video. That same video is on our Facebook social media. Can currently promote it on there right now as a ad so that we see more people, but it reaches even more if you literally click share as a tax. Did you say that? See what you said? Share. It's wonderful and you like it. We love that, but you got to share. On Facebook. On Facebook. Right? And of course it's on our website too. And everyone should be, everyone in here should be following our Facebook page YouTube. And, and YouTube. And YouTube. Good morning. Family YouTube. of Faith okay. Dot org is our website. Okay? Good? Yes. Any other questions? It's going to be a hot party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yay for VBS and slip and slide. And we got some really cool inflatables coming too. So, yeah. A lot God of provides. Yeah. You know, you cannot outgive him. You cannot shut him down. You cannot. Amen. And this is just proof of that. So, we are just going to keep pushing through and do what the Lord has guided us and told us to do. Yep. So, slip and slide is on. Okay. If y'all have questions, ask her. And she'll help. Or Madison. Madison will help too. She's back there in the in the back of the back, so with all your sweet babies. I look forward to VBS because I get to know all the kids at church, church's names, all the dancing and jumping up and down and all the fun stuff. Okay. 
Ushers, we need to receive our offering. The best part of church is giving. Because that's where the blessings come from, right? That's where slip and slide has come from. It's the blessing of giving. So God is too, too good to us sometimes. But we love him and we're thankful for the blessings. All right. Uh, Ken, would you please pray and receive our offering this morning? Countries' calendars go like from July 3rd to July 5th. <laughs> no one's saying it isn't. I, I just think maybe we should give people a little more, you know, uh, a little more stuff. You know, like the important element. Do you want me to cover the periodic table? All right. I'll just feed you, okay? So the 4th of July celebrates our independence from our parents. No. Yeah, no. I celebrate every year the day I got out of Mama's house. Okay. We celebrate our independence from Great Britain that we won after fighting the Revolutionary War, all right? In which we were led by General... Contractors, which are much better than just a handyman. We just have a better general knowledge base or something. I'm going to take them along. <laughs> was, it, was it General Motors? About when you think about the 4th of July, I'm just going to try to help you. Just, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? 4th of July? Fireworks. Fireworks. Yeah. Think of, okay. I keep going, think of fireworks. Yeah, that's what I think of too. Okay, no, no, okay, well, I mean you. Go ahead. Okay, what else? What else do you think? Fireworks. Okay, okay. Let's, let's think of something besides the fireworks. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, hot rockets. Uh, screaming memes. Uh, M80s. Ah. Uh, <laughs> candles. Okay. Can we just please get off the fireworks? You even American. <laughs> you wonder what the 4th of July is about? It's about freedom, but it's so much more than that. It's about opportunity. Oh, we have the freedom to not agree with everyone on everything in this country. One thing we should all agree on is that we live in one of the most blessed countries in the world. This 4th of July, spend time celebrating the freedom you've been given. Celebrate the rights you have in there. Appreciate it all year round and be glad our forefathers signed the Declaration of Independence so, so many years ago. You are so smart. Thanks. Hey, God bless you. It's amazing. And God bless America.
For I have given you this day that you might rejoice in it. For I would say that I have given you this country that you might live in it. I would say to you now, rejoice in me, for I have blessed you. I have touched you in every way that you I've lifted you up every time you've needed to be lifted up. And I would say to you now, I will not forget you or forsake you. I will bless you. I will nurture you. Just follow me in my footsteps. Even though at times it might be rocky and discouraging, I would say to you, lift up your hearts and your voice and praise me and walk in the fullness of the glory of God. Brian, he who paid a great price for you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just praise him this morning. Lift your hands and praise him this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Father, thank you, Lord, for guiding and loving us, Lord Jesus. Even when we're not so lovable, yet you still hold on and hold us up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are the great provider. You are the great I am. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, for those who have needs this morning, Father, we're lifting them up to you. And you hear everyone. And you answer everyone. Thank you, Father, for being so faithful to us, too. Lord, let us understand that you are the one to run to, not to run away, but to run to in any situation in our life. You are the answer. You are the great I am. There's no doubt that, Father, you are trying to protect us. Thank you, Father, for this United States of America that you have brought together, that we should worship you, Lord Jesus, in your glorious name. And devil, we rebuke you. You have nothing to do with this nation. And Jesus' blood was shed for those who protected this nation. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Forgive us, Father, of our trespasses. We need you, Lord. In Jesus, your glorious name we pray this morning, and we all said... Amen. You may be seated.
good to be in church. Amen. Good to know the Lord. Amen. It's glad to be in an American. Amen. We enjoy all of these blessings. Turn with me, if you would, to the Gospel of St. John. God's been good to America. Right now, we're not being very good to him. But he loves us anyway. And I'm so thankful to be a part of this great nation. I want to talk about serving God. Man, it's just such a privilege to be a Christian, and to be a, a part of this church and to have all the good things that God's doing. It's just such a privilege to be here today and to be a part of all of that. Um, let's pray and I'll read the scripture and see what the Lord has for us. Lord, we're thankful for America and the 4th of July and what it means, the freedom to speak our minds, the freedom to worship. And Lord, we don't take that for granted because we know there are people out there right now that would like to take that from us. But Lord, we're determined to fight the fight. I pray the blessing of God, Lord, upon this church. Bless this church, Lord. Bless these people so faithful. Bless these scriptures to our hearts as we endeavor to speak the word of God today. I pray it all in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Starting at verse 24, John 12, 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone but if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal, eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servants will be also. If anyone serves me, him will my Father honor. Lord, Thank you for this word. We love you. We appreciate it. Help us to sow the seeds of faith and do great things for you. I pray it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. If any man serves me, let him follow me. I thought, you know, I'm putting this message together, and I thought the first thing that comes to my mind is that when you begin to try to follow the Lord, you're trying to find his will and work and labor, that the enemy's always sending you off in another direction to do something else. Have you ever noticed that in your life, how that uh, God begins to work and move and all of a sudden you find yourself turning to the left? God never said turn left. It's just the enemy's trying to get you away from what God wants you to have. And you know, sometimes we pray and we say, Lord, it, that, that path you're asking me to walk down is such a struggle. I don't like the path. I don't like the situation. I don't like what's going on. I don't like any of that. And God says, you follow the path that I'm giving 
to you. It's an old joke, it's older than I am, but um, the, uh, a wife went to wake her husband up and said, you've got to get up and go to church. And he said, I'm not going to church. And she said, how come? I don't like them and they don't like me. She went off and cried, th prayed about it. A couple of minutes later, she came back in and she said, there's two reasons why you're going to church. You're 36 years old and you're the pastor of the church. <laughs> Sometimes doing what God wants us to do is not the easy path. And, you know, I, I said that because this time of year, uh, all these churches uh, come open. Everybody resigns to church in the summer and uh, they're looking for a better, a better place and a bigger deal and the will of God and they're traveling along and the church they leave, somebody falls on and comes into that church and they think it's the greatest thing that ever happened to them. Oh, I'm glad that guy left because I'm here in the perfect will of God. Well, I'm, I'm only saying this because, you know, sometimes we leave the perfect will of God looking for something easier because we think easier is better and easier is more like the will of God. God never asks us to struggle and to carry on. Sometimes he does. Sometimes we've got to persevere. Sometimes we've got to just continue on in, in the faith and in the things of God. And if... Uh, if we're going to serve the Lord, we've got to follow him in the direction that he wants us to go. All those voices in your head, they're not all God speaking to you. Sometimes that's the enemy speaking things into your head to bring discouragement into your life and misdirection in where you need to go. Now, it's talking about planting wheat, but there's another place I didn't want to read that scripture, but... There's another place where it talks about corn. And uh, being this is corn season right now, I thought uh, I would take wheat and change it to corn. But I remember going over at my great-grandfather's house and planting corn with him. He put in about 40 acres of corn every year. Now, he didn't grow sweet corn. He grew broom corn. I mean... It was about this big, and they made feed out of it. And if you ever got hit in the head with one of those ears of corn, I mean, it was like getting hit with a baseball bat. It was something else. And he went to the Methodist church, and he was a student of the Word. He had about a sixth-grade education back in that day, and I'm talking about back in the 50s, most people were not educated. And he was about 75 years old then. So basically, once you learned to write your name and put two and two together, you were pretty much out of school and you went to work. And anyway, he ended up, his little farm was two sections. And of course, dad was always sending me over to help him. And he was giving me the story about planting corn. Now, let me tell you a little secret about planting corn. You have to plant it at exactly the right depth. If it's too deep, there's a good chance it won't grow, it won't come up. If it's too shallow, if it comes up, the first wind that comes by after it gets a little height to it will blow it over. There's a certain spot in that ground where that corn seed has to be. And he'd get on that planter, and I'd fill the planters up and grease the planter, and off he would go planting that 40-acre pasture. When he ran out of grain, I would run up and fill it up, and that's what we'd do all day long. And while I was filling it up, he would be preaching to me. And he would say, you know, you got to put that corn in the ground the right, the right depth. And he'd say, that's where you got to live your life. you got to live your life 
at the right depth where God can touch you in that right place, in that right spot. And I, I've, I've thought about that, and it's never left my mind. And he would say, once we get, this, once we get the seed in the ground, we're praying for rain and sunshine. We want it to rain one day and the sun to shine the next. Because when sun shines on wet, moist soil, it begins to make that corn sprout and it begins to grow. And I, I've often thought about that. And you see, uh, if you plant too deep, if you're not in the right spot, if you're a little out of sync with God, if you're not quite where you need to be with God, the devil's been fighting you all week long. You see, that's exactly where Satan wants you because it's hard to sprout and grow. It's hard for that, uh, that seed that's in your life. Now, I'm preaching to Christians. I don't believe there's a person here that's not had a born-again experience. I think all of us are saved. All of us are uh, touched by God. We've made that commitment. Probably all of us have been baptized in water. Probably most of you have the Holy Spirit, and you operate in, sometimes in the gifts. And so I'm not talking to a bunch of unsaved people. Everybody here reads their Bible studies. But you'll, you understand what I'm saying when I say this. Sometimes we get a little cold in our soul. We get too deep or we're too shallow. We're not in the right spot. Or we don't get any rain. We have no moisture. That's why it's so important. I'm still praying for revival for this church. Uh, the Holy Spirit represents the water or the fueling of the church, the empowering of the church. I'm telling you, I believe in these last days that we're living in, there's going to be a revival, not just in our church, but in all of these churches. There's going to be a press for the souls of men because we're seeing a world, we're living in a world today that is more wicked now than it has ever been since time created. Sodom and Garl Gamaro would have to take a back seat to what's happening in most places in America today because of the wickedness that's in this country. I'm telling you, God has planted a seed in your heart and he's touched your life. But you know, the devil wants to get you just far enough away where you don't have the effervescence of the presence of God and you can get a little cold in your soul and you've become a little bit disconcerted about the things of God and what God is going to do. You don't understand, preacher. I've got kids in college. Uh, uh, my job is tough. Uh, uh, I'm behind on my payments of my house or whatever else. Listen, God knows exactly where you're at. Uh, he wants to bless you and touch you and meet every need that's in your life. But you've got to draw close to him. He's not going to bless you until you get close to him. If you walk too far away, you'll never receive the blessing. And my great grandfather used to preach that to me every day, and he didn't have electricity in his house. He had coal oil lanterns. There wasn't any electricity. He lived so far out, there was no electricity there. He had a, a hanger on the wall, and he put his coal oil lantern up, and he sat down in a chair, and he never called it the Bible, he called it the good book. He said, I'm going to read you a few scriptures. You know, uh, i got to be honest with you. When I was home, my mother was preaching to me. When I was working for my great-grandfather, he was reading the good book all the time. Everybody used to call it the good book. I've got the good book. And he'd read these scriptures out of this book called the Bible. And I want to tell you, it will nourish your soul. It will touch your life. I knew God was going to do something if I just listened to him and stay in the right path. It's just the way it works. You see, what that's representing is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You see, it's important that we understand that Jesus died for us. He didn't just go to the cross and miss it, bypass it. He went to the cross and was hung between heaven and earth. And he died. He gave up his life. Gave it up. 
A lot of people thought it's over. On the third day, he was resurrected. Bam, all of a sudden, revival began to break out in Jerusalem. You see, there was a purpose in, in the suffering and in Christ's life. The purpose was that we could have eternal life because of his death, burial, and resurrection. And there's a purpose in your life. Don't think for one minute that the things you're going through or the things that you're praying for that you haven't got or the struggles that you have in your life right now or even the coldness that you feel towards God today. Don't think for one minute there's, there's not a purpose for your life. There's a purpose. And the devil will work overtime doing everything that he can to push you out of the purpose of God, the will of God. It might be a struggle for you today, but if you'll hang in there and you begin to just keep pressing in and you keep pushing into the things of God, there you will see the purpose. You'll see the, the, the answer. And one of the answers is, is that we might be fruitful and be a blessing to someone else. Can I hear an amen out there? I thought, you know, how do, how do you die to yourself? You know, Jesus is talking about dying to yourself. How do you do that? And it's not as complicated as you think. I, I think maybe the first thing we need to do is pray. We need to learn to pray. James 5.15 says the prayer of faith will save the sick. I, I think that prayer is a commodity that softens our heart. You see, when that seed goes into the ground, that hard shell that's around it protects it from all the elements. They have took corn and wheat both out of the pyramids and they have, for an experiment, tried to see if it would grow. A fig tree that was, they thought, extinct, they found some seed in one of those pyramids. They wanted to see if it would grow. They took that corn, they took the wheat, they took that, the fig, they planted it, they put water on it, they put sun on it, they kept watering it, they kept putting sun on it, and pretty soon that corn that was in there that had been there for two or 3,000 years, all of a sudden a shoot began to come up and it was alive. The wheat the same way. The fig tree, was, the fig was the same way. It grew, it started uh, to become a fig tree. I read this just the other day that in Egypt, somewhere around Cairo, in a park, they've got four fig trees that came out of one of the pyramids and they're gonna to try to regenerate that, that group. What I'm saying is that it doesn't matter uh, how long you feel have felt dormant or that you have felt a little cold or that you have felt like God has misused you or that God hasn't blessed you in a timely manner or that God hasn't done his part in your life and you begin to feel a little bit discouraged. Maybe you feel like you're in that pyramid or maybe you feel like you're uh, somewhere where you shouldn't be spiritually. I just want more from God. What do I need to do? Well, I think if you begin to pray, that's the first thing. Prayer softens that outer hull of your life. Have you ever talked to someone, you know, that was battling issues and had things going on. So, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? Fine. You could tell by the tone that they weren't as fine as they were saying. Well, can I, can I be a blessing to you in some way? If I needed a blessing, I'll call you.
we've all been there. I'm preaching to you and three of these fingers are coming back to me. We've all been there at one time or another. How's it feel to be in the ministry? Great. It's awesome. Ask Moses how he felt about being a pastor. You follow what, what, what's lacking? Most of the time it starts with our prayer life. I've been praying that revival breaks out in this church and in this community. I'm praying that all the churches, and you've heard me say this, I went to the Western Wall and and I put my prayer in, and I prayed, and I'm still praying. We want revival. Well, it's not going to come because you want it. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to start praying. What takes that hard hull of that corn and makes it begin to sprout new life? Well, it's the moisture gets on the hull, and that moisture encapsulates or covers that. The sun shines down. And the heat begins to, it actually it becomes, a, it begins, a, it's a humidifier. And all of a sudden it begins to soften that hard shell. And the heat begins to produce what that corn has, naturally it begins to start to grow. And you see, down inside of all of us, God wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be lifted up. But sometimes we get a little bit out of whack. I, I'm just saying, I'm just talking about myself, not just to you, but about myself. What are you going to do about it, preacher? Well, I'm going to start praying more. It says uh, the prayer of faith. You know, you have to pray in faith. You can't pray in disgust or sarcastic or uh, uh, even desperation. We pray in faith because we believe everything that's in this book. I told a man, and he was struggling with a lot of issues and his daughter was seriously seriously ill and he said well what are you going to do about that and I said if it's in the book if it's in this book I'm going to preach it and I believe it because this book does not lie stand on this book the book will give you the answers that you need in your life so you need to pray but I read on in that same verse in James the 16th verse, and it says, and pray for one another that you may be healed. And I thought sometimes we focus on ourselves too much. And sometimes we need to focus on other people. You see, a lot of times we think we've had it pretty tough. I don't know if you've noticed this. There's people out there that's got it worse than you've got it. I don't know if you've looked around and seen that, but there's a, there's a struggle out here in this world. And so when we pray, we gotta pray for other people. It gets us off of our own problems and we begin to try to help somebody else in, in their situation and in their problems. And I used this scripture last week, but I wanna use it again. Jude 20, it says, building up yourself in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. God has really dealt with me over that scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the whole chapter talks about praying in the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I pray in the Holy Spirit more than you do. He said, you Corinthians think you're so spiritual. He said, I pray in the Holy Ghost more than you. But he goes on to say, pray in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit, there is, a, a, there is a, a touch of God that comes when the Holy Spirit that's in you begins to touch the throne room of God. It will change you. How do you die to self? I think prayer is the secret. It's the answer. It will help you. It will get you more spiritually minded. Now, what happens to a seed? And I'm going to close with this thought. <clears throat> what happens when a seed dies in the ground? And that's really what happens is the hull literally disintegrates. And it says, uh, what happens is as it dies, it's transformed. 
it transforms into roots that go deep and a stem that goes up out of the ground into the air and it blossoms. When that seed begins to transform itself, it becomes something wonderful. No farmer ever planted a seed of corn to get one ear of corn. When you look at that stalk as it goes up, a good crop would be maybe 10 ears of corn. Man. If a kernel of corn falls into the ground and it does not die, what is it? It's always just a seed. It's never a blessing. Let's stand to our feet if you would, please. You didn't think I could do it, did you? It's 4th of July. I told you I was going to let you out early. Of course, we might have a three-hour altar call. Who knows? Let's bow our heads, if you would, please. God's good to us. I'll tell you what, I'm so pleased to be a Christian. Let's just start praying. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just all pray together, church. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, every one of us here today needs to be softened up. Life is such a struggle at times. Soften us in your presence. Make us hungry for the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody here have a special need? Just slip your hand up. We're going to pray for you. You just got a need. You got a real need. Yes. Yes. Got a need. Everybody. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this great church, all these great people. You've seen every hand that was raised. Lord, some need a healing, some need a touch, some need a blessing. Some, Lord, some of us just need the water to be poured out on us. Bless us, Lord. Bless this church. Bless this community. Help us, Lord, to fight sin, to stand up against it. Call it for what it is. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's sing.